All right, hello and welcome to a very special bonus episode of the Corner Flag. Uh, we usually record Monday evenings, but this is now a Wednesday morning that we're recording this uh, because we have. And that's because that's how late Mukesh is this time. Yeah, that's very. It's just taken him <laughs> two late. days to come. He's, he's very late. He's so late that when he gets married and he's about to have a child, his wife will be like, "I'm late," and Mukesh will one up her by being even later. Uh, that's how late Mukesh can be in life. No, but we are recording this morning because we have managed to find some time with two absolutely smashing guests. Uh, so without further ado, let me introduce our guests uh, for today on the show. We have Farooq Chaudhary and Sai Goddard, players for Mumbai City FC on the podcast. Woohoo! Woohoo! Welcome to the show, guys. Welcome to the show. Hello, hello. How's it going? How's it going, Sai Farooq? How are you guys doing in the bubble? Yeah, it's um, it's a little bit difficult at the moment, um, especially around Christmas time. We're not with our families and everything, but um, I think we're enjoying each other, everyone's company and the team, and um, we're having a good laugh. That's 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 amazing. I I wanted to ask uh, uh, both of you guys, right? Like, how different is it? playing uh, a, a you know a league in the pandemic because you know our our only options uh, uh, for the three of us at least are are going to play five aside on a turf but you know and and we watch the premier league we watch the spanish league and all of that on tv and we see how depressing it can be with no fans in the stadium but from a player's perspective how does how does that kind of affect the game how do, how does that affect you guys Ooh. Um, I think for me, I think it, it's not too different to be honest. The only thing would be different is um, like traveling to away games and yeah. and stuff like that. But um, the whole routine of it's quite similar. So you wake up, you have breakfast, you train in the afternoon, and that whole routine is pretty much the same. It's just maybe on a game day instead of us traveling maybe three four hours to get to one venue everything's in the same venue so it's right. a, in some ways it's a little bit more easier it's just like on the days off and stuff you can't go and see your families you can't go see your friends you can't go outside and experience different stuff so yeah. um that's the only real difference but um yeah and Farooq, i wanted to ask you like was it tough to maintain uh, the general fitness levels during the lockdown, like when the lockdown first hit uh, and everything kind of shut down uh, with that sort of uncertainty around you, was it tough to maintain the fitness levels? And and what did you do to keep yourself fit and ready? Obviously, it was very difficult. I think mainly, you know, to register this thing in your head that you are going to stay in your house for a long period of time and you don't get to go out or anything, you know. Things were pretty serious, as you know, as you are from India as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, I think that time at when I was at home, it was more of a mental thing, you know, more than the physical thing. It was yeah. very difficult to actually uh, put inside my head so many things going around. And uh, the physical part, I think I tried, I tried managing, you know, with, with the help of my friends, I tried to do a few of my workouts and everything. But I think uh, it was more important that I stayed mentally fit more than being physically fit. Because eventually you can get fit, fit when you join the team. Yeah. And But the mental part is very difficult, which is, uh, which is the most important thing. I think we managed well being with the family, you know, and being with my friends, with the help of my friends and everything. Nice. But as soon as we joined the team here, it was much easier than previously what it was. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let's talk about yeah. uh, uh, Mumbai City, right? Because we are, uh, I mean, apart from Mukesh, who's from Hyderabad and is a Hyderabad FC fan. Yeah, yeah, put you on the spot, right, Mukesh? Yeah, fuck you. No, no, but... actually, Mumbai City, guys. Ah, <laughs> Mumbai City. Oh, Mumbai City. <laughs> Do you hear the... He's so genuine when he says that. Yeah, yeah, Mumbai City. Yeah, yeah, they're a good guy. <laughs> Second yeah. in the league, one point behind the leaders with a game in hand. Huh? Huh? Where's yeah, Hyderabad, yeah. Mukesh? Where's Hyderabad? 
uh, saw them but, lose a few games back. It was so yeah. sad. <laughs> Uh, no, but yeah, let's talk about Mumbai City, right? Because we, 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 I say we because you know we're fans, but it's I it's essentially you guys. You guys are having such a great season, uh, in a fantastic position at this point. Uh, how is how is the morale in the dressing room right now? Like, what's the morale in the in the group right now? Seeing where Mumbai City is in the table. Sai, Sai, ask Sai. Sai is the main uh, guy in the dressing room. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah, I think um, yeah, we've got a very good group of players, not just um, technically and um, as footballers wise, but like personality wise. So um, everyone gets along, which helps us on the pitch a lot. So um, there's all jokes flying about. I wouldn't say I'm I'm the main person. It's probably uh, Rainer, the head the head of the jokes. Yeah. Um, he, he's the clown he's the clown of the team for sure but yeah we have a, a great team morale and um, I think that's helping us on the pitch and okay and, and is, is, the, is the new manager bounce a thing because of course Sergio Lobera has joined uh, the coaching staff as, as, as head coach this season uh, and I think uh, Farouk and Sai, for both of you, this is the first time you're playing under Sergio Lobera, right? Because, I mean, Farouk, you've had a stint with Mumbai in the past, uh, but this is your first full season. And and what what is Sergio Lobera like as a coach? Like, what are what are his his ways of setting up a team? And, and, and for players, what type of a coach is he? Basically, you tell us the tactics. I'll yeah. just tell the Hyderabad FC team. Yeah. Then we can... <laughs> we can, actually, we can we can just kick Mukesh out of this part, and, and, and then we'll let him join in. Please, please remove him, man. <laughs> can't trust, no. Yeah, you yeah, can't. I you think, can't trust. Yeah, basically, as we all know that he's a Spanish guy, and yeah. we all know what Spanish football is. Yeah. So it's more of being technical, you know, on the pitch, and uh, I think it's a lot easier when you have players like Jahu. Uh, Bumus, Sai, and uh, Adam Lefondre, Bart Ogbeche, all the great, I mean, all the foreign guys and also a few of the Indian players who are really good technically, you know. So I think it makes our job a little easier. And talking about the coach, yeah, he's a guy, to be honest, you know, off the pitch as well. Doesn't talk a lot, very shy kind of guy. And uh, yeah, I think we are enjoying uh, this season under him and uh, looking forward, I would say. Lovely. Uh, uh, let's also talk about uh, the City Football Group partnership uh, because it's 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 one of the biggest deals in the ISL that has gone through. Uh, I personally am a Man United fan, so uh, it's a little tricky for me. <laughs> yeah, now boo. Boo, 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 boo. Yeah, yeah, fine, yeah. Fine. Let's throw a moog. Yeah, but wait. Uh, unless do you guys support Man? <laughs> comes do you guys support? No, but, uh, uh, yeah. Man actually, City. that's Man City. Oh, oh, are you are you just saying that, Farooq? Are you just saying that? Uh, and Sai, what about you? Like, what what team do you support? Uh, Spurs. I was no, I was brought up a Chelsea fan. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh. We, feel, we feel so bad that Prashant isn't here. So the fourth presenter, Prashant, is a Chelsea fan yeah. uh, in this yeah, yeah. in this. Do we though? Environment. But like we've said many, many yeah, times in the show, we can only have one Chelsea supporter. Yeah, yeah. So it's fine that it's Prashant is not allowed. It's absolutely mm-hmm. fine. Yeah. But yeah, just going back to the uh, uh, the impact of the City Football Group. Uh, have you as players noticed any differences in the way? Uh, Mumbai City as a club is 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 run now, or are there any changes that you guys feel, or or for you guys, it's just man, you know what? We're going to set up our team, we're going to go out, and we're going to win. That's that's all that we are focused on. Um, well, I wasn't here last year, or I don't think Farouk was, so we don't we didn't really know the setup before. But coming yeah. into the setup now, the organization is very very good. So. Um, they're on top of everything, um, the way the club, especially through this hard time, yeah. and by the way everything set out is very comfortable for us. So we yeah. can focus all our attention on the pitch. So yeah. uh, I'd say organization level is very good. Um, but yeah. You know, it, it's amazing that you say that uh, they're on top of everything because the one thing that they're not top of is the English Premier League table. 
Mukesh, oh. back me up here. Liverpool and Man United, <laughs> first and second in the table. Woo-hoo. Uh, uh, if, if of course, people from the City Football Group want us to edit that out, we will gladly do so. Please don't banish us. Uh, 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 let's let's talk about footballing journeys, right? Because I mean, both of you are our young players, uh, and it, I think I'm the oldest person on this podcast right now, and it pains me to say this. I think uh, so. Sai you're is, always. Sai. Yeah, that's true. Sai, what's your age? Thirty-four. <laughs> oh, yeah, thirty-four. Right? Oh, I told, I told you guys. <laughs> okay, then I, that makes me feel a little better. I still have like a few years in the tank to make my professional footballing debut. <laughs> that's the best joke we've ever had in the podcast. That's absolutely ever. Uh, All hundred and five <laughs> episodes put together. <laughs> Uh, but, but yeah, let's let's talk about uh, your footballing journeys, right? I want to go to Farooq uh, for, to start off this one. When did you know that you wanted to be a footballer? Like, what was what was the moment when you realized and it clicked in your head that man, this is what I want to do in life. This is this is my goal. This is my dream, and I'm going to follow it. Yeah, I I actually started playing football from the age of eleven, and uh, you know, play, just playing for enjoyment. Yeah, and uh, I think after after my uh, board exams, ten standard, there was a time where you get like three to four mi- four months vacation, and you know you do whatever you want, and that was the time. Few of my coaches, like local, I play for a local team there, so they used to tell me. They used to ask me actually, you know, this is a very important um, time of your life. What do you want to do and everything? So that was the time I used. to actually decide what i want to do obviously my father was like if you want to play football you have to study if you don't study then no football you know it was <laughs> as simple as that yeah. so i had to manage both but i think i was pretty lucky when it was about the coaches about the team i got uh, it it helped me a lot talking about my local club and then going from there to pune and so on you know so i think that that part of uh, that part of my life was very important after my 10th standard but eventually it's also about the opportunities you get and how how uh, important it is it i mean how well i can use it that shows like you know how hungry you are how passionate you are yeah so yeah and and what do you think is 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 absolutely necessary for a young indian kid who wants to be a footballer just going by your personal experiences uh because we'll have a lot of young people listening into this podcast so if there's somebody out there who's listening to this who who also dreams of being a footballer can you give your perspective like as somebody who's been there done that as to what that kid needs to be do, be doing in order to realize yeah. that dream yeah it's it's very important to be patient you know when you're young you uh get demotivated really fast when you don't get what you want so i think it's very important to keep working hard and be patient and wait for your chance you will get your chance and i think if you obviously everyone aims to play the top league for for example for us like indians want to play the isl directly yeah. but uh, you got to understand that it's not so easy you have to start from the lowest level yeah. from there you have to keep growing and then you will get your chance to play in the isl i think that's very important to uh, to be patient and actually believe in yourself that you will make it one day nice uh sai i'm going to go over to you uh for a second because you uh, you say you grew up as a chelsea fan uh but but you joined the spurs academy so so what was what what led to that decision you know was it was it tough for you as a chelsea fan to be in the spurs academy cuz london rivals right yeah um to be fair the i joined tottenham when i was 10 years old so quite young but i was just really happy to be in such a a great environment um the set up and structure of tottenham academy is probably one of the top academies in the world so yeah. um at that age being able to play for tottenham saying to all your friends yeah i play for tottenham academy is a, is a, like a massive achievement so yeah. um yeah of course chelsea arrivals and stuff stuff like that but um I wasn't really thinking that at the time i know a lot of people were like how can you support chelsea and 
and play for Tottenham. But most most of the boys playing for Tottenham at the time supported Arsenal, so uh, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't too much of a change for me. It was more 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 for them. Yeah. And, and, Follow up question: Have you ever worn a Chelsea kit to training at any point during your Spurs career? It's like a prank or something. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I, think that, I think that would be a serious breach of rules. Like, for example, yeah, if, yeah. If, if if Mukesh came into this podcast wearing a Hyderabad FC FC jersey, that would we would fine him. We would suspend him for like three yeah. podcast episodes. It's the it's the same way. Yeah, we wouldn't be here then. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we'd lose we'd lose our guests because of something that Mukesh did. Not only would he come late for recording, he would come late wearing the absolute worst possible clothing uh, that he could on the day. Uh, but hey, I'm Mumbai, Hyderabad, friends. Bye, bye. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no. You can't just say that. Yeah. Uh, but sir, so uh, do you still follow Spurs games, or do you do you end up following Chelsea games more? Um, well, I follow both. To be honest, um, it's good to see some of the players um, progressing that I played with playing in the first team, or even other Premier League teams. To see like some of your people that you've grown up playing with, yeah. playing um, playing in the Premier League. So um, of course it's a great league to watch, and uh, I try and watch any, every big game. So uh, I follow both, to be honest. Now, did you watch the I, Amazon I... documentary? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes <laughs> Sorry, because you were saying something. No, I have a question, right? So, there, what is it when you watch football on screen and you played football on a pitch, both of you? What is it that football fans like us who've never played on a pitch at any professional level or amateur level we just don't get? Like, what is something we just don't get that you guys get? So you played and you saw it on screen. What is the big difference for you guys? I'll let Farooq answer that one. Hey, Sai, don't do that, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you answer that. <laughs> Controversial question. <laughs> You're get yourself. No, no, you can tell us anything. Like, at what point are you guys like fans are so stupid they don't get this? <laughs> no, no. It, it's a very simple thing i think there's only <laughs> one misunderstanding which is like when a striker misses a chance you know the fans think that he means it you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the difficult part yeah. other than that i think it's the same the rush you get from football it's the same it's yeah. just that we are experiencing it on the pitch and you guys are experiencing it i mean in your house or in the stadium wherever you are yeah. it's the same as a, as a striker as a as a striker do you ever like if if you're you're on you're through on goal you know and you have the fans cheering behind you and unfortunately you miss and there's always and unfortunately like i think we've all been guilty of that as fans you say hey, fuck you man what are you doing yeah what can you yeah. score i could have scored that in my sleep and you're saying that to like properly probably like world class strikers as a fan oh mm-hmm. you know screw you fernando torres i could have scored that does it ever feel to you like you just want to turn around be like to karke dikhana like <laughs> just do it na then yeah earlier it was you know when you are actually very immature or something like that yeah. but um, when you know that obviously they are doing that because they love the team they want the, their team to win yeah. obviously they want you to score it's very normal you know for them to get in, irritated or angry yeah. on that player yeah. so that's fine now now it's fine yeah. now i'm a bit calm before yeah. i was i was not yeah. if i would hear that oh god then <laughs> get it back <laughs> yeah i think uh, i think that's the reason why uh, i won't ever be a professional footballer because i don't think i'm mature enough to to deal with that pressure and to deal with the fans i think that's yes, the, only, that. that's that the only, only that's the only reason that is the only reason the only reason right it has nothing it has nothing to do with the massive paunch that i'm hiding in this camera angle uh, it has nothing to do with that uh, all right i'm going to go to sai now uh, you've played in england obviously with spurs you've played in italy with benevento uh, you've played in cyprus uh, and now you're playing in india so it's it's a really amazing sort of trajectory in terms of the places that you've gone to play with what were those experiences like and in particular the experiences at benevento and and in cyprus um so i think everyone's a bit um different your you're uh, so in the italian with the italian with benevento um most of the players are italian there so um a lot of it's like seeing a different culture um 
you can see the passion with the players, you can see the passion with the fans, and you can see why it's such a massive sport in their country. And um, yeah, the fan the fans can be ruthless at times when you're not doing well, but when you are doing well, they're, they're like they're in love with you. So um, it's a massive, like uh, it's, it's it's very different to see. Yeah. Um, but I enjoyed it a lot. Um, very good experience for me. Um, seeing the playing styles as well is very tactical there. Yeah. So um, you have to get used to that. And um, in Cyprus, in the Cypriot League, there were some very good players in the Cypriot League, especially in our team didn't do so well last year for the quality we had in our team. Um, but um, the standard, the standard was very high, and it was good to um, good to train alongside some really good players. So yeah. Right. Uh, I want to talk also about your dual nationality. Uh, uh, maybe a lot of listeners don't know this, but uh, you you're Japanese and English. So I think you're Japanese born and brought up in England. So you can represent both teams, but you decided to represent Japan. Now, for Indians, for example, we don't have the option of dual nationality. Uh, and there's not a lot of Indians here who've, who've gone through the experience of picking a national side to represent at a global sporting level. So from your perspective, at, at what point did you make that decision? And what were the factors that were key in you making that decision that, you know what, I could represent England, but I want to go represent Japan. I don't know, it was quite strange. So from a young age, um, I've really like um, supported, like watching the Japan teams in the World Cup because all my mates are supporting England. So like, it's sometimes good to go against your mates. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like always. I was, <clears throat> and yeah. um, I, I always love... <laughs> Hyderabad, Akash is Everton, so yeah. <laughs> um, so I was always supporting Japan's at World Cup, wanting to, them to do well, and they've yeah. done very well at um, yeah. quite a few World Cups. And as well, the playing style fits me perfectly as well, the way they play. And um, I thought, um, just for like 10 years old, even my dad, that's English was like, yeah, you should go and like playing for Japan would be an unbelievable achievement to do. And I was able under 16 level to play, play for them up to, I think it was under 19 level, I was playing up with their youth teams. And uh, for me, it was a great experience playing with the boys and the playing style. And if you talk to anyone that knows about the youth football in Japan and and seeing the the team at national level, you you always say, "Oh, how good they are, and how how fast they how fast they can move the ball around the pitch, and um, the quality and the technical players." So um, I think um, and people will be surprised how good, really good the youth teams are there. So um, yeah, I thought there's a lot of different factors why why the Japanese national team are are like a one that I would say, wow, this is a massive achievement if I could one day play for them. Mm. Lovely, lovely. Uh, all right, now this, we're going to open up the next round of questions to both of you, all right? Uh, think of it as somewhat of a rapid fire, but not quite. You can take a little bit time as well. Uh, let's start off with your footballing idols. For you guys, who are your absolute footballing idols? Sai. Farouk first. Yeah, Farouk. My, my first. idol is Sai. Sai Godard. <laughs> yeah, my, yes, yes, my yes. idol is Farouk. Ah, <laughs> see, this is this is what it takes. So does, sweet, Hyderabad, yeah. does Hyderabad FC have this camaraderie in their dressing room? <laughs> huh? I think not. No, their players also say Farouk Chaudhary. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, uh, all right, but but uh, out okay outside of Mumbai City FC, let's make it let's open the 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 pool a little bit. Outside of Mumbai City FC, who are your footballing idols? Farouk, go first. Okay, so I when I started football from the time I mean from my childhood, I've been I like uh, Ronaldinho, but if you ask me currently. I like Neymar. Like Ooh. I would uh, follow him, you know, 
the way he does things on the pitch it's like amazing lovely and and say um for me growing up i've always loved the the barcelona team and um, the star man is uh, messi so uh he can just do some ridiculous stuff on the ball so um yeah it's always enjoyable watching him play nice nice all right uh who is the toughest opponent you've ever faced in your entire career apart from each other because i'm guessing yeah. first you guys will say oh like <laughs> yeah. in fact i'm just looking at the list of questions i think for all the questions the answers can be each other as the first answer it it, it just perfectly fits but uh, but yeah so the toughest opponent you guys have faced in in your entire careers in all the opponent leagues opponent as a team or a player as a as a team and a player let's do both as a team uh for me i think i when i uh, when i was uh, playing with the under 23 national team i played with played against sydney fc where adam lefondre was playing mm. and at that time i think <laughs> that's the toughest opponent oh god that match was like i don't want to play 90 minutes i just want <laughs> to get out of the match they were like making us run like crazy it was very tough and we being youngsters you know there was all the players were like under 23 and their their team was like a proper they were the champions that season i think in the a league right and uh, it was uh, alfie's adams first game that time the pre season game he scored one goal and they scored some i think 3-0 something that was the toughest game i think and and would you say that adam lefondre is the toughest opponent as a player as a player i wouldn't know because he's a striker i'm a striker for me yeah. it would be any defender right yeah so talking about the isl i think the toughest opponent would be right now in my team i would say fall murtada fall okay yeah all right all right and sai what about you what what's the toughest opponent team and player for you probably uh when i when i was at spurs and when i got the opportunity to train up with the first team uh musa dembele Ooh. um Ooh. He's absolute absolute beast of a beast of a player so when when he had the ball you couldn't take it off him um sometimes you knew what he was going to do right? and um just get his body there there's no way you're going through him and uh, when he's coming to press you you know to move, try and move the ball quick because when he bec- when he comes in like one one meter away from you you know he's going to get his body there or his arm there or his little finger there and just push you aside so uh, <sighs> for him for me training with him he was absolute joke of a player um and that's why probably he's done so well in his career but yeah yeah, yeah. all right uh for both of you again what is the one thing that you absolutely love about mumbai as a city of course i mean uh, for for sai you you've come in and you you're playing but you're in goa you're in the bubble so you might not have uh, experienced a lot of the uh, the mumbai city uh, but farooq can help you out on this one as a as a bombay boy uh, he can help street you food. out in this say sai street food <laughs> <laughs> have you had any yeah. have you had the chance to sample any of the street food here though one day we had i think uh, this pani puri i don't Oof. think that he had it I don't remember. Yeah, I have to, I have to, I have to be careful with some of the Indian yeah. food yeah. because I might be on the toilet all night <laughs> because I'm not so used to. It. To be honest, that's true for all of us. Yeah, that's true. If yeah. see, the I thing mean, is, no, the the thing about Indians is a lot of Indians will be like, oh, you can't handle Indian food and all. We can't handle it either. We're just too yeah. proud to accept that we can't handle it. But yeah, uh, all right. Uh, I think we kind of had an answer to this earlier on in the episode, but I want to make it official. Who's the joker in the Mumbai City FC dressing room? Who's the one who's always playing pranks? Who's always getting the morale up? Who's who's that guy? Senior. It's Rainier. It's Rainier, Rainier right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. He has a he has a heavy social media presence with Mumbai City FC. Also, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it has to be Rainier. And 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 Sai, are you going to go with Rainier as well? Yeah, he's the he's the clown of the team. <laughs> All right. Sure. Uh, Wait, okay, so can you share like one incident with us? One of his best or funniest pranks. Sai, um, he doesn't really. I don't think he does really pranks, but he just. Yeah. If if music's playing, he's the first one to get up and start um dancing and um 
shaking his bum around the change room and everything. <laughs> and, he, and he just doesn't care. Everyone's just dying of laughter. And um, yeah. yeah, for sure, Rain is top of the list by far. All right. and, and and on the other end of the spectrum, who's the most serious guy in the dressing room? You know, like a Roy Keane type of figure who you don't want to mess with somebody with like experience and is very serious and, you know, you, you have tons of respect, but you dare not cross him. Like somebody, even Rainier would be like, yeah, I'm not going to mess with that guy. I, I'm too scared of this person to go and like be a joker around this person. I don't think we have... Someone no, no one's right no, no one's no one's overly yeah. serious. But not yeah. not training, even the skipper. Not even the skipper. Train... No, not no, so much. Easy. Everyone's he's fun, chilled. you know. Yeah. yeah. All right, lovely. See, I'd see? say the only one you wouldn't want to mess with in training is Fool because uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he'll go straight through you with one of his challenges and his size. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think, but I he's think... a nice guy. So. Yes, I yeah. wouldn't say he's proper serious or anything yeah. like that. You just wouldn't want to get in in the way of one of his tackles. Yeah, I think yeah. Akarsh, uh, uh, we should introduce Farooq and Sai to our uh, our definition of a defender like that. Uh, you remember from from many episodes ago. You want to introduce them to the definition of this type of defender. Zach, so this is a running joke with our, our podcast. Uh, we call them a thudda. It's just like there's thudda. there's that thudda. A thudda. The the big defender it's, where you you walk up to him and you know you're like you know what I'm just gonna pass it back to my keeper. I'll see you like <laughs> hopefully see you. not the rest of the game. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. Uh. There's that. Uh. And finally, I think I think it's uh, we're running out of time as well. Uh, you guys have other commitments as well. This has been an absolutely fun chat. Before we let you guys go, uh, it's a very simple question, uh, and there's honestly only one answer to it. Uh, Sai and Farooq, as as avid listeners of footballing podcasts from around the world, <laughs> what is your favorite football podcast that you love listening to week in week out? For me, of course, the Corner Flag podcast. Oh, <laughs> of course. Was unprompted, oh, guys. That was flag. unprompted. Wait, wait, wait. Farouk, you were going to say the same thing? I was going to say the same thing. Come on, Sai. You should have let me answer first. All right. Let's 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 hear it, let's I, hear it from hope, you also. I was, I was hoping they were texting each other what's the name of this. <laughs> <laughs> what's it called? It was a goal net? Yeah. Something like that. Something. <laughs> some, <laughs> some obscure football terminology. <laughs> uh, but uh, that brings us to the end of this absolutely fantastic episode. Thank you so much, Farooq and Sai, for, for taking the time out and talking to us. This has been an absolute blast. Uh, we hope we can we can catch up with you guys again once the season's uh, over and we have the ISL trophy uh, in our hand. I mean, not our, in your hands. Uh, and and you know, we'll I wouldn't be, mind in my hand either. We could we could take a couple of photos, different angles. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so so thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you so much for coming and and, and joining us. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. For thank you. Us. Best Thanks, of luck guys. for the rest of the season. Thank you guys. Thank you, you guys. thank you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.